Okay, so a question for you. I'm going to show you two Excel data analyses and which one do you prefer? So here's our first data analysis and you can see if we click on it, it's the classic pivot table setup. Nothing wrong with that necessarily. Neat and tidy, all the information we need there. But what about this analysis? And this analysis, a bit different, isn't it? I'd say a little bit clearer and it's got some dynamic quality to it as well. We can change the cells and see the values come through there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create both of these analysis and I'm going to explain the one I prefer and tell you the one I've never used. Perhaps you've guessed already, but if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Chris Mortimer, Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm a real world Excel consultant, content creator and lecturer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. Before we get started, let me tell you about my Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out all for you, the 21 formulae, 13 techniques that you need to know in Excel. And I've created three free videos that have never been shown on YouTube or anywhere else. It's totally free. The link is in the description below this video. With that said, let's get into this. So make sure you download the download file and work along with me. So let's look at our data first. We've got our anonymous salary survey. So we've got person, region, salary, salary band. And over on the right, I've got some typical questions that we might want to ask about this data set. So this is what we're going to be analyzing. How many people from each region? We've got four regions here, north, south, east, west, the average salary for each region, and then the average salary for each region for each salary band. A bit more, a bit trickier, a two criteria analysis. We've got region here and then salary band over here. So what would you do? What would you do if you had to do this data analysis? Well, I know a lot of people would go ahead and build a pivot table. We've got a pivot table right here. I'm actually going to go ahead now and delete this sheet from the file. We're going to build a pivot table. We're going to go through the steps and you can let me know what you think to pivot tables. So when we do pivot table, we've got to select all of the data, including the column headers. So selecting the top left corner, Control shift uh, right, control shift down, although there are quicker shortcuts to, uh, to do that. People will tell me in the comments. Then we're going to go to insert and then tables here. We've got pivot table. So insert pivot table that creates that gets us to this dialog box. And you can then choose. Uh, we've already selected our data that's pre selected. Do you want to put the pivot table on a new worksheet or an existing worksheet? Sheet? Typically, I always go for a new worksheet. So we can go ahead, hit OK here, and this is our pivot table interface, of course. So to remind ourselves what we want to do, it's good to go back to our question. So how many people from each region? We've got to look at the question and then look at the columns and work out which columns are we interested in. First, we're talking about region. So back to the pivot table, I'm going to tick on region and I can already see Excel has gone ahead and added region to the pivot table there. But it's not quite what we want. We're not counting everything. So I can select on region and then go down to values and you can see Excel has defaulted to count. So we've managed to answer our first question there, which is how many people from each region? But what do you think about that as an analysis? And would you give it to your customer or your colleague? Right. Let's go to the next question. Answer it with a pivot table. Average salary for each region. Right. To answer this one. Uh, we're going to take salary now. I'm going to drop it down into values and then we can see we've got sum of salary here. So that's not quite what we want is it sum. So to change the operation to an average, we can click down here and then go to value field settings. And here we can choose what max and min and all kinds of things. Let's just go to average here and then we've got our average salary coming through. So with a pivot table, there's no doubt it's powerful, it's fast, but there's a few downsides too. We've managed to get our average salary for each region. This one more challenging. We've now got a two criteria data analysis. We want to look at region and at salary band. So how can we do that? Well, we've got to tick salary band definitely. And if I tick it, well, yeah, this, this is not too bad, is it? Uh, Excel has put salary band into the rows. I'm going to drop salary band into columns and then I'm just going to dispense with count. So I'm going to go to count and then remove field. And this gives us quite a nice table. And this was the table we originally began with. So that's how to do this analysis with pivot tables. Are you using pivot tables yourself? But the truth is, guys, I don't use pivot tables. And I know this is going to wind some people up. Excel confession time. I don't use pivot tables. Why is that? Well, a couple of years ago, I had 
this happened on two projects almost exactly at the same time. People said, I don't want to use pivot tables. I don't want my stuff using pivot tables. They don't like interacting with the pivot table interface. And it kind of fed into kind of pre-existing concerns that I had about pivot tables, because to me, it just seems like a bit of a loss of control. Like when we generate a pivot table, where does the pivot table go? We're never quite sure. How is it going to appear? Are we going to get new columns and rows? Now, no doubt those concerns, they get easier with time and easier with experience. And I don't claim to be a pivot table expert, but there are alternatives. So let's go ahead and look at some alternatives and maybe you'll understand why I don't use pivot tables. Okay, so what about this setup? I'm just going to clear some of the formulae out of this setup. Now, no doubt if you formatted your pivot table very well, you could achieve something like this in terms of the presentational quality, but it's much easier to do with basic cell formatting. So let's answer our first question here, the number of people. So in data, how many people from each region? And I'm going to go ahead and answer this for two criteria. How many from each region and each salary band? This is doable with a fairly simple Excel formula, the countifs formula. We need to use countifs plural because we're looking at two criteria, the region and the salary band. So how do we build countifs? As always, let's look at the prompts Excel gives us. So criteria range one. Looking at the data set, what's our first criteria? It's region. So we're going to go ahead, select the region column, control shift down. And that's the first part of the formula done. And then hit comma now before we go back uh, to the other sheet. Otherwise, it's going to mess things up. And then criteria. So Excel is saying from that column you've just given me, which criteria do you want to pick out? We want to pick out south. We want to pick out the region. So there it is. Uh, the the um, criteria goes in there. Back to the date sheet, our next column is going to be salary band. So once again, to the top of the column, control shift down. We've got to be careful here that the rows are lining up exactly row five to row 5004, row five to row 5004 hit. And now comma again before we change sheets and now criteria two. So Excel is saying for that column you've just told me about, where is the value you want me to pick out? And it's right there in the salary band. So that's it, the countifs formula. You get the power of a pivot table. Yes, it takes longer to set up than a pivot table, but we don't have all the junk that comes with pivot tables sat in the file there. Let's validate this. Can we get the same result in two ways? The same result as with the pivot table. So we've got 243 people south and C into the pivot table here at the beginning of the file, south and C. Ah, we've lost our count, haven't we? Okay, uh, can I quickly change this average of salary Okay, what can we do to quickly uh, bring this back? Let's go to uh, region here. In fact, I'm going to get rid of average salary, remove field, count of region. Uh, yeah, and this has done the job for us. So once again, yeah, that, that was pretty powerful on behalf of the pivot table. Uh, so 243 people south and C, and let's go to C and south, and I can see 243 people there. So we've validated what we've done by doing it in two different ways. What about average salary? Salary. Well, a nice thing about the these data analysis formula I absolutely love. If you build one, it's quite easy or certainly easier to build the second one. So we're going to copy this formula across. Control C, hit the escape key, double click into this cell and then Control V here. And then I'm going to change this because now we want averages. So I'm going to change this to average ifs plural. And this is going to get us part of the way there. So we've got our column and our criteria, our column and our criteria, but we need something else, which is an average range. So Excel is saying which column contains the data that you want to perform the operation on, that you want to actually average out. So I've clicked in the formula there. You can see the cursor flashing over to the data cell. And now we want the salary column. We want the salary column because that contains the data we want to average. I can see it's gone in there and now comma and that should complete our formula. So if you have one data analysis formula, then the others are easier to create. Hit enter now. And what have we got? 74.5 for South and C. I'm going to go back to the pivot table now. And let's go back to, let's bring salary back. And let's have average of salary here. Value field settings and then average and then OK. And then I can see we've got average here, South and C. So 243 
for South and C here. And our average salary, 74.5. Let's find average salary here, thousands ABC, 74.5. So we did manage to do the same thing two different ways. Now with the data analysis formula, we've got count if and count ifs, average if and average ifs, sum if and sum ifs. And if you're on Excel 365, you can also use min ifs and max ifs too. They're in the download file for you to experiment with. So what did you think? What did you think? And the truth is, I find pivot tables really quite difficult to use, but it's not just about me and it's not just about us as data analysts. More importantly, I don't feel confident giving pivot tables to my customers to use and even to my colleagues to use. That's because I'm not absolutely sure about their behavior. You know, it's quite difficult to fix the formats in contrast to in contrast to using the data analysis formally to create these cool interfaces that my customers anyway just love using. So let me know in the comments what you think. I'll see you in the next video.